This is a beautiful day. We are going to catch them. Big ones. Late fall on the river. The sun is in its equinox and winter is just around the corner. The perfect time for smallmouth fishing. Ranger boats George Little and tournament angler Jimmy Bell are ready to search out this river system for bronzebacks. The plan going into today is just to finesse fish, to throw light line, six, eight pound line, small tubes, hair jigs, and just uh, catch a bunch of fish. You ready to go, boss? I'm ready. As a walleye guy, it's really nice to get an opportunity to get out on the water, see some of the things that the guys are doing on the bass fishing. It's really an opportunity for me to see how somebody like George is going to dissect this river when it comes to this time of the year. In the fall, if you find any stream, any reservoir, anything like that that has a dam on it, the smallmouth will always migrate towards the dam in the fall. Have you found that? I have found it and it's not just a one fish deal. When they're coming down the river it seems like if you can intercept them someplace you can catch a bunch of them at once. Yeah what well, we you know we're on a tributary off the Mississippi River that goes for miles and miles. I don't know how far it goes but one of the dams is is not too far from where we put in today so we're basically fishing the lower end near the dam where these fish are going to wind up wintering and once again, it's a classic pattern no matter where you fish. The water temp's right, the water level's right, the water color is right, and I'm ready. Got one. There we go, Jimmy. Oh, what? Yeah. That's a real fish. How about that? <laughs> that cold water <laughs> makes them a little sluggish, but. There we go. That's a pretty fish. Isn't that pretty? They are. They're yeah. dark and just beautiful. That little finesse jig. Really deep corner right here, so I like that. I like when they bite. That's, <laughs> let's go figure out if we can catch a whole bunch more like that. Yeah. Let it get down there on the bottom and just really slowly drag it. These smallmouth are just a hoot to catch. I don't care if you catch a 12 inch fish or a 20 inch fish, they're gonna fight until you get them out of the water. The fish are right in this corner. There's a little current blowing into this corner. We're getting to this time right now where we're out with the smallmouth, where we may have to downsize a little bit. And I'd like to see how this is gonna work, taking some of the walleye stuff that I know and really trying to put it to use in these smallmouth on the river. Aren't there's bait and where there's bait? There's smallmouth. Get him. Good yep. job, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Not one of the big ones, but a fish. Yeah. When we finally caught that first fish, you know, it, it really did tell us something that worked the remainder of the day. Um, and it was in a very hard corner in the deepest spot in some real heavy cover. So there was current, the deepest spot in the river and a lot of cover. The, those fish were not relating to just a slick bank. Oh. He was way out here, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. So it's been kind of a tough day for us. Um, we were expecting a lot better, obviously. The, the water temperatures seemed like they were right. Everything seemed perfect, but it was tough. Oh. <laughs> I think it's my turn. <laughs> Uh-oh, get your dollars out, boy. That could be the dollar <laughs> fish right there. There we go. Oh, that's a fat toad. Mm. Yeah. That's a little more like it. Ah, oh, nice job. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little more like it. There's no doubt about that when he bit it. So we're getting to figure something out now. We got this hard Sweet. corner. Yeah. 
deep water, hard corner, big fish. Nice. Ah! <laughs> Gotta love it. One thing I can say is if there's a tip here, it's you don't have to fish shoreline structure. As a matter of fact, I catch more fish off the bank, even in a small stream like that, than I will casting at the bank. Those fish relate to boulders, rocks, and they don't care where they're at. They don't have to be on the bank. They can be under the water, and most times you'll find that the rocks and structure you can't see are the ones you'll catch more fish off of. And look at your locator, you'll find those spots. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. By Berkeley Trilene, Anglers Trust Berkeley Trilene, America's strongest. Quebec, providing emotions since 1534. Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keeps ice longer. And by these other fine sponsors. My plan was really to finesse fish today and use small, lightweight tubes and even a little power grub uh, or Northland hair jig and finesse these fish and catch them as we have done in the past. Well, it didn't work out that way. We wound up, I wound up flipping some with, with big line and jigs, uh, throwing a spinnerbait some, throwing a crankbait some. We tried everything to catch these fish. We wound up catching fish, but it wasn't quite the plan. And I think I just had a bite. You did? I did. I missed him. I got a bite. Yep, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> you got him. <laughs> I told you I wanted to catch one on that heavier rod. <laughs> you get into some of these situations in the fall where it just doesn't work out the way you think it's gonna work out. But what do you gotta do? You gotta dig down and you gotta just keep trying. There we go. Ah. On the jig and the biggie. There you go. Jig and a craw. Jig and a power craw. Nice. Thank you, sir. The fish might not come one right after another like you were anticipating they were going to, but it's still get out there, get after the fish, try different things. I think yeah. we're going to get a couple more yet. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to start to happen. Beautiful nice fish, fish, buddy. Thank you. Oh, that's a slap. That's what lives here. I can see why you like this spot. Woo! That's a fish, George. Yeah, there we go. I caught that big fish on a, just a little bit of a drop. As I talked about, you had to have some type of a drop with a little bit of trash there on the drop. That's where that fish came. I've been out fishing days I didn't catch that much before, but it certainly wasn't what I expected. There's one. Okay. <laughs> <Whoa! laughs> yeah, yeah, there's one. That's a real fish. All right, That's a tank. Way. What do we think of that one? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a real fish there. <laughs> there you go, buddy. All right, I'll give you your dollar back. <laughs> Look at the day that we've had today. We've been able to go out, catch some beautiful fish on a beautiful day. People miss out on that and really don't think about the fishing right now this time of year. So he was right off the end of that rock pile, kind of where we were hoping he yep. was. I mean, we were talking about it. Everything felt just perfect about that spot. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then we threw other baits, and how yeah. many casts did you make with that? First cast. First cast. First cast. We're going to try that, <laughs> try that some more. I think I will. <laughs> Finally, Jimmy hooks a big fish. You know, we, we caught the you know one of the five-pounders that we were truly looking to catch there that day. And as you've seen today, we've caught some real quality fish. It was a tougher day, but we had a great day on the water either way. And it's something that anybody could put to use in some of the rivers and smaller streams that you've got around your place. Get out there, give it a try. You'll have success, trust me. The equipment we used today was pretty simple. We used a seven foot medium action spinning rod with a Pfluger spinning reel, eight pound spider wire, and then an eighth ounce tube or an eighth ounce uh, hair jig. The casting rod was a 6.9 Techniques casting rod, Revo reel, fluorocarbon line with a Berkeley finesse jig. We really kept it downsized and on the bottom to get our bites. Should we go down this bank one more time? I think we work up until where I caught that bigger fish up there. Okay. Um, then maybe come down and hit this other spot, but I'd say yes. 
You caught a big one up there? Yeah, I did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and I want to catch another one up there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I might have to help with that one. Yeah, I think we got him. That is a nice fish. But it's not too bad. Yeah, so why don't we keep working up this bank a little bit further? I think that would work just fine. I like that just fine. And that's a dandy. I don't care where you that's are. That's just beautiful fish. That's a good one. You know, the day as a whole, it was great to go fishing. No question about that. I, uh, I loved it, and we did catch a few fish. It absolutely wasn't what we expected. But you know what? There's still time left. I'm still going to get out there, and I will figure those fish out and catch me a bunch of big ones. So it, uh, we'll chalk this one up to experience and probably try some different things the next time we go out. When you use the right gear, you catch more fish. And I want you to enjoy the exact same success that we did on today's show. That's why we're giving you a chance to win the selection of lines and lures that we use. Including a spool of eight pound spider wire stealth braid and a spool of eight pound trilene 100% fluorocarbon and five packs each of three inch power bait trigger craws, three inch power tubes, and three inch gulp grubs. To enter this free drawing, go to Facebook and like the fishing club. Then, click on the TV tested Win What's Working button at the top of the page and follow the simple instructions. Love the fish? Then like the fishing club on Facebook. There's a lot to like and a lot to win. Next up, Knot Wars. And then Dr. Hal Schramm answers the question, do introduced bass compete with walleye? Welcome to Knot Wars, where we put fishing's best knots in a head-to-head -head competition to determine which knot you can count on. Now last week, the Reback Knot beat the Nanofill as we search for the strongest knots for Superline. This is an important competition because relatively few knots work with these great lines. For consistency, all testing will be done with 14-pound Berkeley Fireline. The weekly winner will be the knot with the highest overall average after it's tied and tested a minimum of 12 times. If you missed last week's competition, here's a refresher on how to tie the Rebec knot. Start by running the tag end through the hook eye, then make four loose wraps around the hook shank before bringing the tag end back through the hook eye in the same direction as the first pass. Now here's the tricky part. Slide the four wraps over the hook eye and up the main line, and then tighten carefully by pulling on the hook, tag end, and standing line. The challenger this week is the Burke Knot, a strong contender from the 2010 season of Knot Wars. Here's how you tie it. Double the tag end and run the loop through the hook eye. Then, run that doubled line up the main line before bringing it back to form a loop. Run the doubled line through the loop five times. Moisten with a bit of saliva, then tighten using both the tag end and the main line. So it's the Rebec versus the Burke. Which is stronger with Superline? Let's find out. I already had the trusty knot testing machine set up. We've got our challenger, the Burke knot, here on the left. We've got our weekly champ, the Reback, here on the right. Here goes. <laughs> we have a winner. The Reback has beaten the Burke, but boy, look at these scores, 23.6. And again, the hook flew off the thing. And you know what that means? It means the Reback moves on the next week where it's challenged by the mighty Palomar. Hey, the knot that wins the next competition will be the new Knot Wars champ in the Superline category. By the way, if you'd like to practice the Reback, the Burke, or any of the knots featured in Knot Wars, simply visit fishingclub.com and click on Knot Wars, or better yet, download the free Knot Wars app, now available on iPhone and Android. Knot Wars, because no good fish story ends in a broken knot. Fishery managers have introduced various sport fish. The reason? Provide greater diversity, greater angling opportunities. Sometimes these introductions have met with opposition by anglers. For example, striped bass have been introduced into many reservoirs, and oftentimes black bass anglers have balked and said the striped bass are eating their black bass or competing with them for food. Research has shown that neither is the case. 
A more recent issue about the effects of introduced smallmouth bass has emerged in the large Missouri River reservoirs in South Dakota. Here, walleye anglers are asserting that the introduced smallmouth bass is adversely affecting the walleye fisheries. They found that the smallmouth bass do eat some walleye. Walleye are 5% of the smallmouth diet. In fact, they only ate the walleye in the spring before the young of the year gizzard shad were available. As soon as the shad were available, the smallmouth bass switched to shad. The next question is, do they compete for the same food? They looked at the diets of the two fish and they found out that indeed, there was very high diet overlap. The diet overlap though was for shad. During the summer, when the young of the year shad were available and small enough to be eaten, both species were eating a lot of shad. Biological assessments indicated that the shad were abundant enough to support both the smallmouth bass and the walleye populations. The researchers took one more step. They looked at the growth of walleye. What they found is that elevated temperatures in Lake Sharp were reducing the growth of the walleye. Fewer large walleye. Interestingly, the same elevated temperatures were favoring the growth of smallmouth bass and accelerating the growth of the smallmouth. So it isn't the smallmouth bass that's adversely affecting the walleye, it's the temperature. Can this situation be remedied? Yes, it can. Upstream is Lake Hawaii. If they increase the cool water releases from Lake Hawaii, that would moderate the temperature in Lake Sharp and keep this system working. The more we know, the better we can manage. That's good for the fish, and that's good for fishing. The following products have been field tested and approved by members of the North American Fishing Club. The easy to hook lure adapter eliminates the need for knots. Just loop, pull through, snip and attach, and you're ready to go. Armando Hernandez of Canyon Lake, Texas liked the ease of threading. If you would like to become a field tester, text the word FISH plus your email address to 57682. Steve Panaz explains what to look for when selecting fishing line based on their sink rates. Next on North American Fishermen. question for you. Does Superline sink or float? I'll show you. It floats. You know, I've been placing a lot more importance on a line sink rate after trying to throw a topwater popper on fluorocarbon and watching a line drag the bait down. A scientist will tell you water has a specific gravity of 1.0. Anything with a lower specific gravity floats, Anything with a higher specific gravity sinks. Here's how four types of fishing lines rank in terms of specific gravity and sink rate. Superline, 0.97 floats. Mono, 1.13 suspends. Spider wire fluoro braid, 1.5 sinks. And fluorocarbon, 1.75 and it sinks fast. For years, anglers have been using lead core line to get their baits down deep, so the idea of selecting the line for more than just its strength characteristics has been around for a long time. For example, my favorite line for fishing baits like the gulp sinking minnow or the Berkeley heavyweight worm is fluorocarbon, and it's not because the line's nearly invisible, but because it sinks. When you're fishing baits like this with a line that floats, it slows the bait's rate of fall and impedes its action but a sinking line helps the bait sink faster, giving it more action, and that way you're gonna catch more fish. Need to get small baits deep? Consider fluoro. Vertically jigging fast water? Consider fluoro. Casting poppers? Leave the fluoro at home. There was a time when I used to select a line based solely on its strength. I wanted a line that was strong enough to land any fish I might hook. But since then, I've learned to take all the line's characteristics into consideration, and I must admit, the line's sink rate was far more important than I initially thought. Hi everybody, I'm Laura Shera, and this is North American Fisherman's Border to Border. Each week, we travel east to west across the country to find the hottest bites that are happening right now. This week, we go from north to south. Hi, I'm Eric Hotty with North American Fisherman. Got one going. Just got out here. We're fishing in Wisconsin on the Madison chain, and there's a very unique bite that we're going after right now. We're ice fishing for monster catfish. These big catfish in the middle of the winter, boy, do they fight hard, too. Some of them will scream out a bunch of lines. I'm telling you, there's some unique fishing going on out here. Catfish in the middle of the winter. 
Oh, there you go. There's the first one of the day. Not a real big one, but a nice little channel cat here. Again, on the Madison Channel Lake. In the middle of the winter, that's what you can come out here and catch using these automatic fishermen. Unlike a flathead catfish, these channels will feed all winter long. And on these natural lakes here in Wisconsin, you've got a phenomenal big catfish bite going on. This is Captain Jim Wilcox down the Florida Keys. Let me tell you something about March. It's the craziest month to be here. It's a transitional month. We're going from winter to springtime. It's when schools of bait fish show up here in large pods, followed by tarpon, cobia, sharks, sawfish. The bone fishing and the permit fishing, the wreck fishing can be fantastic. March is a great time to be here. Each week, Border to Border brings you the latest news on the hottest bites around the country. You want more information? Log on to fishingclub.com and make sure you throw a few back. North American Fisherman is brought to you by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. By Abu Garcia for life. Berkeley Gulf Alive. Looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter of hunting, fishing, and outdoor gear and by these other fine sponsors.